Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, the climate guy setting the record straight about climate. This video is a true story about climate scientists wanting to make the record cold even colder. Climate scientists are moving ahead with their plans to spray pollutants into the atmosphere and thus block sunlight and cool down the temperature of the atmosphere even colder than it already is. The U.S. and Canada are experiencing one of the coldest Januaries on record, and it's not completely obvious that most citizens want scientists to make the temperatures colder. Last Sunday, I was in Washington, D.C., ice skating on the reflecting pool. The Potomac was frozen solid that day. It didn't really look like they needed a lot more cooling. Climate experts argue that this year is a fluke, but that simply isn't true. Over the last century, the first week of January temperatures have declined rather sharply in the U.S., particularly since the year 2006. There's been a very sharp decline, with this year being one of the coldest on record. In fact, the frequency of cold nights below 20 degrees Fahrenheit is at a record high this year, with 74% of nights below 20 degrees Fahrenheit during the first week of January. This is, of course, the exact opposite of what you hear from the press and climate scientists who use models rather than actual data. The idea of climate scientists messing with the climate is not something new. In the 1970s, they wanted to melt the Arctic ice cap in order to stop global cooling. This article from Newsweek in April 1975 was titled, The Cooling World. Climatologists are pessimistic that political leaders will take any positive action to compensate for the climatic change or even to allay its effects. They concede that some of the more spectacular solutions proposed, such as melting the Arctic ice cap by covering it with black soot or diverting Arctic rivers, might create problems. Another idea that climate scientists had in the 1970s to stop global cooling was to dam the Bering Sea and they had 60 theories to explain the global cooling period. A few weeks ago, Scientific American told us that global warming is causing the cold weather. But two days ago, settled science changed its mind, and Scientific American told us that the cold weather actually had nothing to do with global warming. Nevertheless, Democrats in Congress are forging ahead with their plans to pollute the atmosphere and make the United States even colder than it currently is. And as the organizers of the upcoming Olympic Games prepare for very cold weather and potential for frostbite in the crowd, the New York Times is warning that the Olympics are getting too hot. This year is looking like it's going to be an extremely cold, snowy Olympics, but it wasn't always like that. In 1932, Lake Placid hosted the Winter Olympic Games, and on this date, January 14th, they had no snow. In fact, the 1932 Winter Olympics almost had to be canceled because of a lack of snow in New York. On this date in 1932, January 14th, it was 70 degrees in New York City. Not ideal conditions for skiing. It's currently 17 degrees Fahrenheit in New York City, so 1932 is about 50 degrees warmer than this year, which climate scientists say is the hottest year on record. Data from the Rutgers University Global Snow Lab shows that Olympic fear-mongering by the New York Times has no basis in science. Winter snowfall has been increasing across the northern hemisphere to record levels in recent years. Increasing snow extent is an indication that cold Arctic air is pushing further and further south. Thousands of skiers in Switzerland are currently trapped by too much snow. They can't leave the resort because of avalanche danger. Italy and France are also having record amounts of snow. This is fairly typical reporting for the New York Times to make up completely fake news stories about the Olympics being threatened. But January temperatures weren't always this cold in the United States. When George Washington was president in 1790, Philadelphia had many January days over 70 degrees, and boys were seen swimming in the rivers, which are currently frozen. Climate alarmism is based on junk science, superstition, terrible models, and a complete lack of understanding of history. And the people behind it want to engage in dangerous activities to pollute the atmosphere and make the climate even colder than it currently is. It's very important that these people are exposed and defunded before they do any more damage to our economy or our climate. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.